Hey guys, what's going on? Today I got an interesting little video here about a sprint tower I found in Portland, Oregon. As you can see here, it's pretty strategically placed uh, overlooking a pretty densely populated area. And uh, we're gonna be looking at a double carrier aggregation of band 41 today. Uh, and hopefully it's gonna provide some pretty good speeds. Um, I'm really hoping for that. So let's give it a shot and see what kind of speeds we're getting here on uh, the Sprint network. And I do have a native Sprint SIM card now, so we will have that aggregated band 41. So uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. So let's take a look at what we're getting here. Looking like 55 millisecond ping, five millisecond jitter, and roughly 45 megabits per second down check the aggregation here you can see band 41 at 20 band 41 at 20. looks like it's going to end at 40 megabits per second down 40.6 and we're looking right at the tower so you're getting a pretty good upload speed for band 41. 17 18 let's see what we're getting here 19 it might even push to 20. Uh, not quite yeah there we go 19. 19 megabits per second up Solid speeds for band 41, that's for sure. We're gonna just try a sprint server for fun here. See if it changes anything, you never know. And uh, Tacoma, Washington is normally what the phones pick. So 72 millisecond ping, 28 millisecond jitter. And as you can see, it performs a little bit better on the download, jumping around a bit here. Uh, let's take a look here. Looking like 56, 57, almost 60 megabits per second down. Oh, it jumped up, 65. Much better performance from this tower. 67 down and looking like, I'll let this upload finish out. Probably almost the same here. It looks like 19.6 megabits per second up. Pretty solid. Uh, band 41 double carrier aggregation is honestly fine. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. We're just gonna throw this into an nperf test and um, yeah, we'll just see what happens here. Gonna go do a full test. Uh, this is one of my first days with the full access to the Sprint network. So uh, I was kind of being uh, geeky testing things out. And as you can see, nperf push is a little bit higher, getting up, up to 75 megabits per second down. And that upload speed pushing over 20 megabits per second up. Latency is pretty good for nperf. Normally I notice that nperf doesn't have great latency. Um, but it's, uh, pretty good for nperf. <laughs> and looking at the browsing here, normally I don't do a full test, but, um, I thought it was worth it because parts of the Sprint network are being shut down. So, um, definitely worth it, I think, to just, you know, see how it performs, uh, while it's still in its full form. Um, things load relatively well. Uh, I think this was before I removed the streaming um cap that they have on 480p so my plan now is the unlimited plus plan so i have a 720p streaming cap um but actually it might be 1080p but in this instance it should have been a 480p streaming cap um but it held up okay taking a little bit longer to load and buffer here um but it does play which is better than t-mobile's streaming cap But it looks like it's taking its time, as soon as I say something about it. Generally a good performer, um, I would say. Um, no matter what Emperf says, you know, it, it's saying 73% browsing, 41.9% for streaming. Um, it's honestly really solid. I had a, no problems using it, and it was actually less congested than the local um, T-Mobile network that was there that was quite congested. And actually, we're going to go ahead and just see um, kind of speeds we're getting here. I'm going to try band 25 on this tower as well. And we're looking at band 25 at 15. So no aggregation here, but a single channel of band 25 at 15 should still be able to perform quite well. As you can see, does very well because there's probably no one else on the tower at the moment. Uh, potentially, I, I think 
Um, there will be some customers on the Sprint 3G network still in their pre-existing CDMA network. Um, but, you know, congestion wise, that shouldn't be a problem. Looking at a really good upload speed on band 25. Of course, band 41 and band 25 are much different frequencies. So we're looking at um, easier, uh, easier packet, packet travel and like less loss rate. And just things are running better with band 25 because, you know, you're not at 2.5 gigahertz or 2.6 in some cases. Band 25 is quite similar to T-Mobile's band two, looking at uh, 1.9 gigahertz. And band 26 is actually Sprint's 800 megahertz network. Um, and that is based off of their old CDMA and um, 3G networks. And that probably, that frequency set probably came over from Nextel or, um, I don't remember what it is. I think it's Com World or something like that. I'd have to look it up. Um, but they Sprint Sprint managed to get quite a bit of frequency from those two back in the early 2000s. And as you can see, it's not a solid performer really. It's only five megahertz of spectrum. Um, realistically, it's good for long distance transmissions. I mean, like if you're looking to extend your coverage, like Sprint is often looking to do. Um, Band 26 is a solid performer when you're looking for an extension coverage. Um, not necessarily in speed. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Sprint's Evdo Rev A network. And as you can see, it's showing that I am registered in Evdo. And of course we're right next to the tower, so it should be relatively well performing. So let's take a look and see how this performs. So pretty good for Evdo. Of course, we're right next to the tower. Um, 2.6 megabits per second down, looking like almost 2.7. 88 millisecond ping, 18 millisecond jitter. Pretty good for 3G. Although, like I said, we're right next to the tower. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. Upload speeds are variable um, depending on where you're testing Sprint's 3G. Uh, of course, this is a special case scenario, but um, performs pretty well. Looking at about 0.75 up, which is usable if you have an older device that still supports this network. Um, but of course, this is going to shut down relatively soon. All right, well, now we're going to take a look at the T-Mobile LTE network and 5G network, which we're looking at N71 at 10 and band 66 at 20 here. And we're just going to compare it. Of course, it's not a fair comparison, um, but we're going to see how it's performing. As you can see, it performs quite well in Portland. Um, most of the time you're actually on N41, um, but in a couple rare case scenarios, you're still on N71, uh, which performs quite well. 55 down, 50, yeah, 55 down, 38 millisecond ping, four millisecond jitter, and a solid upload of 30 megabits per second up. Pretty solid, I'm happy with it. It performed amazingly almost everywhere in Portland and in some cases blew past my own <laughs> expectations, uh, especially on the N41 side, pushing past 500 megabits per second in some cases. I'm gonna give this one more test here on the Sprint 3G, uh, my bad, the T-Mobile 5G network. And as you can see, a little bit lower on the ping time there, 26 millisecond ping, 10 millisecond jitter, and looking at probably about 45 down. 46.7 down and about 30 up again. Extremely consistent. I like consistency. That's exactly what I want to see from the T-Mobile network going into the future. I'm really happy to see it. Hopefully they can keep that up, uh, you know, through their merging of the two networks, converging networks, um, and, you know, push some even faster speeds in this area where we have a sprint tower that's active. Hopefully that's going to be marked as a keep site because this area could really use some N41. All right, and now we're gonna take a look for a second at uh, band 25 that I saw while I was driving up Interstate 5, which is the main highway going into Portland. Uh, if you're coming from the south or from the north, if you're coming from uh, Salem, Oregon, which is to the south, or Seattle, Washington, which is to the north. If you are coming from the south, you will roam on Sprint in a couple places. Now, if you do have a Sprint SIM, uh, as you can see, I was able to access um, 20 megahertz of band 25 uh, two carriers of it, and it was zippy, hitting speeds of 97.7 down and 21 up uh, with a 48 millisecond, or my bad, 49 millisecond ping and an 18 millisecond jitter. Now, obviously, this isn't anything, you know, mind-blowing, but um, 
in an area where I was getting N41 all the way up the highway, it was a nice filler and I still was hitting 100 megabits per second down and um, made up for the gap that T-Mobile would have had there in the first place. So um, really nice to see from T-Mobile and Sprint and um, exciting stuff. Glad to have this SIM card, a little bit more testing coming in the future, hopefully some interesting content coming out of it. Um, in my local area, they've started to kind of wind down the Sprint network and I'll make sure to have a video on that soon to kind of go over the process and things I've noticed and some oddities, uh, particularly one that you want to watch out for is um, Sprint bands like band 25 and band 26 showing up registered under the Verizon network. Uh, at first I thought it was a glitch. Many people online might think so, but no, it is showing up in multiple case scenarios and I'm working on a way to test that as well. So keep an eye out for that video if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Thank you for watching you guys and uh, definitely keep an eye on my channel. I had a month gap here, but I'm gonna make sure that I can get back on track and I got a lot of interesting content lined up. So keep an eye on it for that. Subscribe, like, and everything and have a good rest of your day.